let's talk about forms. If we remember from our original bug tracker template, that came with a form called bug submission form. I've gone ahead and made quite a few adjustments to that. So let's head back over to our customer support template and take a look. First and foremost, I went ahead and renamed it to feedback form. And now there are a couple of different forms in here. So let's take a walk through them. This particular product has a web app and Android and iOS version. So I've made those different versions. If you only have one product and one web app, you don't need to make multiple versions. This is just showing you all the use cases. From here, it's pretty easy to adjust this. Now, again, this was based on the free Airtable uh, version. So you won't have the ability to add a cover image. You can go ahead and click the X to remove out uh, the this. So you can go ahead and click the X and click the X so that you can get rid of those logo and the cover image. From there, this is super simple to update. You just go ahead and make any changes that you would like, add in any relevant information, contact information. You can customize it to your little heart's content. So first and foremost, I required the customer email. Remember, we added that in the original database form. Easiest way to add and remove fields, you just drag them over. So we drag it over there, drag it over here. Very, very handy for drag and drop. So you can add in these little emojis, make sure you give specifics, and that you're clicking that little required button when required. Remember, we need their email address to let them know <laughs> that we received their feedback. So be sure that you're clicking required on information that you're going to use later on. Feedback type, this is where we've added the bug or feature, description, attachments. Be cautious with how much you are requiring. I would hesitate to require attachments, but again, it's a personal preference. Priority, again, is something that you may or may not want to include. I think it's valuable marketing insight in terms of how important is this for your customer, but certainly something you could disregard. And here's where we added the join our newsletter. This is a great little uh, technique. You could certainly capture their email address and this would be an opt-in. They are requesting to opt-in. So you can do that. The next two fields, uh, I say I pre-filled. So remember I said we have multiple versions. If we have multiple versions, we want to know where this feedback is coming in from so that we can accurately address that. So the last thing we want is folks on the web to be giving us iOS changes and vice versa. Let me show you how to pre-fill these forms. So Airtable has a wonderful support document on how to pre-fill forms. I'll be sure to link that in the notes, but let me show you how it works in real time. The first thing you need to do to set up a pre-filled form is go ahead and click your share form button. Once you do that, it creates this link. You need to copy that link. So just command C. Then you're gonna go ahead and open up a new tab and paste it in there. Now, when you paste it in there, this is not going to be there. This is how we pre-fill our form. So if you take notice, when this form opens up, web app and web app are already filled in for us. That's because this is data coming from a web app and we can put this link specifically on our web application and on our mobile application, we can include a different app or a different link, apologies. So in order to create this prefill situation, you just add a question mark, type prefill underscore, and then you need to add in the specific column field. So that can get a little bit tricky if you have changed the field labels on your form. Be sure to reference your full database and look at these labels. This is the label you need to use in the form. So for me, that was associated features. And anytime there is a space, you just use a plus sign. So I'm saying pre-fill when associated features, then you need to type in equals and again, what that option is. So for this, it is specifically web app. Again, it is case sensitive and you need to add the plus sign when there is a space. 
to add in the next section, all you do is add the and sign and repeat prefill underscore application this time because we have no space, there's no need for a plus sign, and then equals web plus app. So there you have it. That is how you prefill a form. Again, we did one for the iOS the same way. We prefilled iOS and iOS. As I said, that documentation is linked for you below, but that's how you prefill an Airtable form. So let's come back over to our form here. And now we can see that we have the entire form filled out. Just as with all the other views, if you want to duplicate this, you right click and hit duplicate form. And that's how I created the iOS form. I've also added in, so uh, edit description, I also added in that specific link once it worked so that I can keep track of it and it would be very easy for me to share with my team to add to the web and mobile applications to be sure I am capturing the correct form. If you do not need to make those changes, you can simply use this share form link and it will work perfectly. That is how you create a form and for you to make any additional changes as you'll see from above anytime you have these kind of little stars it requires a paid account so you can make changes to the message that you're receiving once the form is submitted and what happens if you want to submit another response or show a blank form you can turn those on and off there you have your form now you can take this form and embed that URL on your website wherever you would need to. And the final step is to see what happens when people submit a response through that form. So now that we have our forms all set up, let's go ahead and get some test data ready for when we want to set up our Zapier email notification. All you need to do is just put in some fake data here. So we're just going to go ahead and fill this out very quickly test data to see if form works. No attachments today, but you could definitely give that a try. I did test it earlier, so don't need to here. Priority, we'll say it's high, and we'll go ahead and join the newsletter. Remember these are pre-filled, and then just go ahead and hit send. So we can see in our main grid that that submission was received. But what happens if we're not in Airtable all the time when these reports are coming in from our customers? That's where our Zapier automation with the email comes into play. Let's hop over to Zapier and see how we can get an automated email response each time this form is submitted.